everyone, and welcome back to Thoughts on the Cosmos. On the last episode, we saw as our picture of the universe evolved from that of only one galaxy to one populated with many galaxies. This was a result from the discoveries made in the early 20th century by legendary astronomers like Harlow Shapley, Heber Curtis, and Edwin Hubble, all of whom played very important roles in painting the portrait of the universe that we have today. It is a portrait of a universe of wonders where our galaxy, the Milky Way, drifts like an island of stars in a vast ocean of billions of other galaxies, some much older and much larger than the Milky Way that we inhabit. Could there possibly be intelligent beings populating those other galaxies that have also discovered the same idea? But only to them, the aliens would be from the Milky Way. To them, the aliens would be from here. One of those early 20th century astronomers was so badass that he got a badass spacecraft with a badass onboard telescope named after him. That's pretty badass. Today, this telescope continues the tradition of its namesake by peering into the depths of intergalactic space and capturing light that has traveled across distances of millions of light years between galaxies. I'm talking about the Hubble Space Telescope. The cool kids just call it the HST. And as of today, it has been operating for more than 25 years. The first ever of its kind, a space-based observatory orbiting over our heads, taking pictures of the universe beyond the Milky Way and relaying it to us humans here on the ground. As I mentioned previously in episode 4, Edwin Hubble was the astronomer who was instrumental in gaining for humanity the idea that other galaxies existed beyond the Milky Way. He did this by verifying a crucial piece of evidence when looking at images of the Andromeda Galaxy. Back then it was known as the Andromeda Nebulae. Other galaxies are places that exist far, far away from here, separated by a vast expanse of cold and empty space. Since the distances between galaxies is so large, we're talking about stretches of space as much as millions or even billions of light years, we would need special measurement techniques to find out how far other galaxies are. This applies to anything beyond a few hundred parsecs. A parsec is a measurement of distance equal to about 3 light years. More on what a parsec is in a later episode, you might have heard it mentioned by Han Solo from Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. There's a special and strange type of very bright supergiant stars in the universe called Cepheid Variables. They're called Cepheid Variables after the star Delta Cephei, which was discovered to be the first of its kind. More importantly, they are referred to as variable stars because they physically change in temperature and brightness over a period of time. What I mean is that if you were to visit these stars and study them closer up, you would find them to swell and shrink over time due to the nuclear reactions inside. As a star depletes its primary hydrogen fuel source, it starts to expand and contract. The intensity or magnitude brightness of the star begins to pulsate because of the unstable chemical reactions. For stars, it's all just a part of growing old. The middle-aged star at the heart of our solar system, the Sun, is also a variable star with an 11-year sunspot cycle. You have periods of time with heavy sunspot activity, and you have periods of time with less active sunspot activity. Okay. Back to Cepheid variables. Variable stars, when observed from Earth, shine with a beaten rhythm of changing luminosity. They appear to fluctuate in brightness according to a regular pattern. Astronomers call this the period luminosity relation. Bright Cepheid variable stars have noticeable periods of changing brightness, ranging from 1 to 100 days which make them suitable enough to be studied within average human lifespans by curious astronomers on planet Earth. For Cepheid variable stars, the longer its period, the brighter the star tends to be, which make them easier to detect. 
by measuring the pulsating periods of Cepheid variable stars, we can derive their close-up or absolute magnitude brightness based on the period luminosity relation. When you compare this absolute magnitude with its apparent magnitude, that which we can observe from Earth, we can find the distance to the variable star using this equation, which relates both apparent and absolute magnitude brightness to the distance to the star. It's derived from this physical phenomenon, this thing called the inverse square law for light, but it's been simplified for our case. I've talked about this in my video, The Hunt for SN2014J. It's a throwback video to a younger and sexier version of me. Y'all can go ahead and check that out right here. Edwin Hubble was such a hardcore badass, he found these pulsating jewels of wonder, these Cepheid variables in blurry faded black and white images of the Andromeda Nebulae, more than 2.5 million light years away. And by doing the distance analysis on these objects, he ended the great debate of whether there were other galaxies existing beyond the Milky Way. From that moment on, it was no longer the Andromeda Nebulae, but the Andromeda Galaxy. A pretty awesome achievement for the time, given the limitations of the equipment. He made his discoveries from where he was standing on planet Earth, with nothing but his telescope and his massive pair of astronomer balls. You notice that that's one thing about the astronomy that we human beings do. All of the discoveries are made from an earthly perspective. We're figuring things out on a freaking huge galactic and intergalactic scale, and we literally had to look out across millions of light years to do it. All the amazing things we know now, we figured out from the perspective of our tiny little corner of the universe, from our tiny little piece of the Milky Way, the third rock from the sun, a planet called Earth, a mode of dust suspended on a sunbeam. Bravo humanity, bravo job. Well done. But don't give up yet, there's still a lot more to know. This has been Son of Terra 92, and you've tuned in to an episode of Thoughts on the Cosmos.